first half. Well, you know my name is Simon. Miles drives it and dunks it. 22 for him. We're tied at 40. Arizona would go on a run. There's Mike Bibby inside. He stays inside and follows it up. He had 23. Now, Arizona State only has seven players on scholarship. Shows late in the first half. They start getting tired. Jason Terry, two of his 17. A 43-15 run to end the half. Game was decided. A Lutz team hadn't given up 100 in regulation in eight years. 125-99. This is for the C-Note. Derek Smith couldn't get it to fall, and Arizona's streak continues. All kinds of streaks. 127 to 99. The Cats are victorious. They set a Pac-10 also in the Pac-10 and unbeaten. There's the giant tree. The tree would enjoy this in front of a very reserved Stanford crowd. You know, those folks still enjoy Chris Weems knocking down the jumper. He had 15. Arthur Lee, yay. 15 for him. Five of nine. Thank you very much for that accompaniment. 99-62, Stanford rolls. Lee had all of his points behind the arc. He was five of down, one under two minutes to go against Cal. Shot clock running down. And Toby Bailey knocks it down. UCLA up by a deuce. 11 seconds to go. The Bears down by three. Now, you got some strategy to think about here. You want to tie it? You want to score the bucket and then foul. Well, now time's running down. Now you got to think three. Oh, but they got the dunk inside. Sean Marks with the dunk, but UCLA is still up by one now, and they play a little game of keep away, and Bailey does it quite nicely, and the Bruins hang on to beat the Bears by a count of 74 to 73. Fifth time in the last... Work the give and go. John Carlisle enjoys the benefits. Utah up 27-23 at the half. Second half, more Miller. He steals the ball from Lorenzo Johnson. And Miller takes it the route. 17 points. More Miller. Now he's being unselfish. He finds Alec Jensen for the three. And the Utah fans were having so much fun, they're tossing little children around. Hey, stop. Andre Miller bucked the Rams personally. 17 points, seven boards, and six assists. Miller was everywhere, said Michael Dields. 13, you want LB. He had the hot hand for three. He's got it. Clayton Shields for three. Clayton Shields for three. How about Clayton Shields for three? All right. How about Clayton Shields for three? I'm enjoying the thing. Fifth triple of the half, 564 in his career. Coach Billy Baino of UNLV trying a different defensive strategy, perhaps. Kenny Thomas inside. Kenny Thomas, who no doubt delighted Lobos fans by saying he's staying for his senior year, scored 22 as New Mexico. Virginia on the run. Greg Jones abuses Keith Friel with the crossover dribble. Look at it again. Again, but Friel would certainly have his say before this one was out. West Virginia up 49-44 after that play. It's tied at 72 with 19 seconds left. Gerard West heaves it, tries to beat the clock, gets nothing but air. So now Notre Dame is going for the win. Keith Friel, there he is, brings it in, throws it up, and hits it with .4 seconds left. The Irish lead by two. West Virginia, one last final heave at it. And they get a pretty darn good heave at it. Damian Owens' prayer is not answered. The catch and shoot from the free throw line. And Notre Dame wins 74-72 for its first win against a ranked opponent since February of 1991. Catino Mobley, no look pass to Luther Clay. Lays it in. Tyson Wheeler now on the break. We're looking for an alley-oop pass to Clay for the monster rip. URI up by eight at the half. Jim Harrick wondering if he left the iron on. You know why? Because there wasn't much to worry about. Mobley fakes the shot, dumps down to Clay again for another rip. Clay finished with 14 points. Now Mobley with the steal, and he's not going to give it up this time. Rhode Island cruises in a roller coaster game. The Rams didn't score until six minutes, 51 seconds into the game. Under the wire, tied at 52, nine seconds left. Monty Mack gets the ball, gets sort of bumped. No foul call. We're going to overtime, and Bruiser Flint doesn't want to pick up the technical, so the smile is just his umbrella. In overtime, UNC Charlotte misses. Jonathan DePina gets the loose ball to Charlton Clark, to Mack, who gets the foul this time, and the bucket, and UMass. Never trailed in overtime, going to win 68-62. The 49ers held Monty Mack, UMass's leading scorer, scoreless through the flooring and rebounding. First half, Tech up by one. And here is why. Harpering working down inside in the soft touch. He had 10 in the first half. Tech by 13 at the break. Second half, Jackets were stroking it. Harpering from outside. Bobby Crimmins crew 10 of 18 behind the arc. Harpering now with the steal, and he's looking for the fab freshman, Dion Glover, who will finish it. And a little touch pass in the middle there. Harpering 9 of 12 from the field, 22 points. Tech 83 to this and Cincinnati. Bobby Brandon led the Bearcats in scoring, but he doesn't always have to shoot. Good look.
Thank you very much. Kenyon Martin, 6.7 boards for him. Southern Mississippi's won six straight and a hang tough. Jimmy Floyd, the fadeaway. He led the Golden Eagles with 18. Since he a little too tough inside. Melvin Levitt misses. Martin does not. Didn't score many points in this one, but he did them in style. Bearcats have won eight in a row, 77-61 the final. Johnson misses the free throw, bounces around in there. He'll eventually wind up with his own rebound, but lost control of the ball. Willie Mitchell got the ball and hit Torrey Ward with a bomb, and he threw it down, and the Blazers are up by three. Ten seconds left, Louisville down two. One last chance, Cameron Murray. Inside, dishes it out. Johnson for the tie and get it done and UAB comes up with its first ever win over Louisville fifth well, that winning streak at home early first half Ryan Mendez drains one of his two triples he would finish with six points and then later in the half Chris Weems hits a three of his own he was two of six from three-point land part of a 29-12 Stanford run and then Michael McDonald drives the lane hits the short jumper Stanford up 18 at the half and then remember last year Brevin Knight for three Arthur Lee for three, Stanford pounded them 109 to 61. UCLA's worst loss in school history. They would not let that happen again. Jelani McCoy for the jam. He had 19 points. UCLA within three. Next Bruin possession, Toby Paley. Nice cut and the slam. Now they're just down one, but they wouldn't get any closer. Arthur Lee drains the three. He had 17 points. And then the nail in the coffin. Paul Sauer drills a triple. He had five threes. Tied a career high with 19. Hey, Chelsea Clinton. Enjoying the game as the Cardinal withstood a furious second half rally by UCLA. Early in the first it's half, Utah working Dolby the ball to Dolby Alex Jensen. And he misses the easy jumper, but Hannah Metala there to follow it up for the jam. Two of his 14 points. Utah by eight. Then Utah takes it inside. Andre Miller feeds Michael Doliak down low. He nearly gets stripped, but he stays with it. And he had 10 points in 18 minutes. Utah by 20. Then second half, the inbounds pass goes to Metala from the corner. He knocks down the three. And despite a limited contribution from Michael Doliak, who played only 18 minutes due to the flu, Utah routed wide. That loss to Michigan. First half, Rashawn McLeod to Chris Carowell inside and one. Blue Devils up 25-7. Still first half, still Duke. Trajan Langdon, Trajan Langdon cubed. Duke led it by 16 at the half. Second half, Clemson climbing back. Vincent Witt off the steal, takes it all the way in. Clemson down by eight. Now less than a minute ago, Clemson down three. Terrell McIntyre to Harold Jameson. Baseline jam, Clemson within a point. So now 14 seconds remaining, Clemson ball down three. But Duke ties up McIntyre. He gets the ball back. The problem's here on the inbound. Steve Wojciechowski can't handle the inbounds pass. And Duke turns it over. Clemson, another chance off the inbounds. McIntyre, trouble there, but then drives, shoots, misses. Ikeri Turbe will get the rebound, and he can't get it to go. Duke hangs on, 81-80. The Blue Devils are off to their best start since the title year of 92. State, there would be no debate as to who was number one, but. Vince Carter not about to let that happen. Takes the pass and then just throws it down. All Carolina in this one. Second half, Ed Carter, the lob this time to Carter. Reverses it home, and then later in the second, it's Coda. He was doing it all. Bounce pass to Carter. Question, where's the D? Carter, oh, goodness. Carter at 17. The Tar Heels roll. Mountaineers trailed by as many as 36 in the second half and were never in it. The Tar Heels controlled the first in that hand injury. Nine minutes left in the first half. Lester Earl, the steal, dunk. Kansas down two. Final seconds of the first half, and Dwayne Davis, Dwayne Davis shoots it from Topeka. But Manny Diaz with the last second tip, he finished with a game high 26. During halftime, Kansas retired the jersey of the great Wilt Chamberlain, who was quite emotional. This man's. I'm a Jayhawk, and I know now why uh, there's so much tradition here and so many wonderful things that have come from here, and I'm now very much a part of it by being there and very proud of it. Rod Shaw, Jayhawk. So now 120 left in the second half. Kansas up by four. Ryan Robertson, the lonely man there on the corner. Robertson had 15. Kansas wins 69 60. Close shave. Second half, under a minute to go. Arkansas down one. Make that up two. Tariq Wallace. And then a minute later, same score. Kentucky looking to tie. Off the miss. Nazi Muhammad there for the tip in. We're tied at 67. 
Five seconds left. Arkansas looking for the win. Kareem Reed looking to be the hero. Kareem Reed, not the hero. We're headed to overtime. And that is it. And in OT, Kentucky comes out running off the miss. Wayne Turner ahead to Jeff Shepard, who dishes to Heshimu Evans. Goes glass. Wildcats by four. So now 12 seconds left. Razorbacks down five. Pat Bradley. Banks the three to bring Arkansas within two, but they need to foul to stop the clock. Bradley commits the foul, his fifth. Can't watch as Wayne Turner hits one of two free throws. So now Kentucky by three, time running out. Bradley's on the bench. Who do you go to? How about Tariq Wallace? They do. It's short, and Kentucky wins. 80. What a good 77. Evans scored seven of his season high 20. Physical play. All night. Watch the spot shadow. Giant Rogers trying to box out CJ Black. Yep, goes for the shorts. But Black gets called for the pushing foul. Later in the first half, falls down one. Brandon Warden, the nice drive, nice hoop. Balls led by one at the break. Second half, more physical play. As you see here, Joe Zahn Darby on the screen tries to knock Tory Harris out of the way. Darby's called for the offensive foul, but the rough stuff just getting started. Later in the second half, Ansu Cisse gets hit hard inside. Tory Harris and Cisse tangle. And suddenly, we've got an out-out fracas. And on the bottom of the pile, Michael White trying to restrain Harris. The cooler heads would prevail. No ejections given out. Double technicals were assessed. So now some defense. And it's Vegas Davis. That's a swat. Vols upset Ole Miss. 77-67. It was the trailer. Broke his nose in the first half, but would return. Like Lewis Bullock, meanwhile, had his own personal three fest. Travis Kyle into Bullock. And then Wolverine's on the run. Robbie Reed to Bullock. Another three. Michigan's first 15 points were on threes. Do we have another? We do. Bullock again, five threes on the day for Bullock, and then Bullock with the pass. The trailer, 10 points for the tractor. The only way to stop Bullock was to foul him. They did it here, but he hit all three of his foul shots, and Michigan rolls on the road. The Buckeyes set out to stop trailer, and Lewis Bullock made him pay. The junior guard with Wolverines, and like Bullock, Mateen Cleaves, who almost went to Michigan, was hot from the outside. There's one three, there's two threes. Do we have a third? We do. Now going inside, Cleaves, the bucket, and the foul, and then the head fake, baseline J, beyond the arc. Another tray, five of ten from beyond the arc for Cleaves. Michigan State by one, but Cleaves wasn't done yet. Two on one. Takes it himself for the lay-in. And one more time, Cleaves. the man's a menace. A career-high 27 for Cleves. The Spartans have won seven of their last eight games. And early on, Trey Kilpatrick with the huge swat right there. He had 17 points. And watch the referee, Mike Kitts, as he runs up court. He gives Jim Calhoun the technical for arguing the no call. So Calhoun, the Huskies, down two at the half. Second half, Connecticut comes out strong. Off the Georgetown miss. Khalid el Amin, the great point guard, to Kevin Freeman. To Richard Hamilton for two of his 25. And Calhoun's team goes on a 21-4 run to open up the half. And the coach looks calm, but that would change. First, we go back to Sunday against Boston College. Khalid el -Amin chasing the bad pass, runs over Calhoun. Both were okay. All right, so we go back to Saturday. The referee, Kitts, here. Watch him in the spot shadow. Actually flips over Calhoun right there as he runs up court. It's the same ref who teed him up earlier, but coach gives him a helping hand. Says, you all right there? Back to the action, late second half now. The freshman, el -Amin with a nifty move up and in. The double clutch. He had 13 points and five assists. He did hurt his ankle on the play, but he did return, and UConn scored eight straight. Eight and Baylor, a second and a half to play in the game. Tied at 78. Patrick Hunter misses the three. We go to overtime. Tied at 78. Baylor with another chance. Four and a half seconds left in OT. Tied at 85. Roderick Miller throws it away. Adrian Peterson, the desperation three. After the buzzer, we've got double overtime. So now six seconds left in double OT. It's Patrick Hunter pushing it up court, and look at this. Drops one up. Get it! Baylor takes the lead by two, and look at it again. Nice moves, and may have walked, but it counts. So now, Oklahoma State still in it. Four-tenths of a second to go. Chad Alexander, a perfect pass to Brian Montatney. 
and he just misses it. And Oklahoma State loses. We ought to get 10 wins for this one, said Baylor. Stephen Goolsby here gets nothing but backboard on the three, but Tony Rutland makes the steal. And then nice fake, and the circus shot goes in. Wake Forest on a 14-2 run. And then nice ball movement here by the Demon Deacons as Steve Goolsby hits one of his four threes, and Wake Forest gets the win. TCU at San Diego State playing without their leading scorer, Lee Nalon. Malcolm Johnson responded by scoring 31 points. He hit six threes for the Horn Frogs. Mike Jones added 26, handing the Aztecs what equaled their worst home loss ever, 105 to 61. Rutgers up three at Pitt, less than 13 seconds to go. Von Tigo Cummings hits a three. It's good. It sends the game in overtime. He would finish with 22 in overtime. Panthers down one. Cummings drive. Doesn't fall, but Isaac Hawkins there for the tip in. Pitt takes the lead. Last chance for Rutgers. Earl Johnson misses the three. Sam Sanders gets the rebound, but can't get it to go. And it's all over as the Panthers hang on. And Pittsburgh's Ricardo Greer consoles his brother Jeff Greer on the Rutgers loss. Set to take on Purdue. And he did. Minutes into the second half. Playing D, the rip, and then the fancy pass to A.J. Guyton. He'll finish. Guyton had 21. Indiana up eight. Eight minutes to go. Wrecker again. Down the lane. Got the foul. He had 27 plus 12 boards. Hoosiers up 14. Purdue coming back. Nine point game with two and a half left. Brad Miller all alone. Cranks the three. Hits it. Indiana's up six. Now 40 seconds left. Indiana's up four. Michael Lewis zips it. William Gladness and goodness for Indiana. Indiana 94 to 88 that's your final the freshman wrecker had a career high 27 10 of 16 rampant cats coming out of the gate strong Mike Bibby playing some D strips the pass and then pushes ahead there's Bennett Davison he'll go to the rack plus the foul Zona scored the first 10 points of this game more defense here Michael Dickerson down inside gets it low gets it to Bibby and same deal, Davison waiting for it up high and throws it home. He had 15. Bibby once again looking for Dickerson. Half court alley oop, and it worked. And a 20 won't do it. 20 points might. 89 70 is your final. Throws it away. Tough day for Celestin. Had only three points, and we went into overtime. You know, if I dress like this, they'll show me on Sports Center. And we did. In overtime. Damian Owens finished with 21. West Virginia is up two. And then it's Jared West playing the defense, comes up with a steal, and you can't teach hustle. Gets it to Adrian Pledger. West Virginia outscores Nova 19 to 5 in overtime to win it by the final of 79-65. Six of Damian Owens. Georgia Tech here off the free throw miss. Randell Jackson fighting for the board in traffic. Got it, plus the foul, and FSU's up 66-58. Georgia Tech coming back. Matt Harpering driving left hand. It rolled a drop plus the foul. Tech down just two. Eight seconds to go. Tech down three. Harpering tips the ball almost by accident, but it works. Tech with a chance to tie. Harpering dribbles in traffic. Cranks had a good look, but the shot just bounces off. And the Knowles are winners here. Florida State stopped a three-game losing streak and rebounded well from its worst loss of the season.